guys. I've had a lot of interest with people learning how to make this sourdough sandwich bread that I make. So I wanted to do a quick tutorial. So this is my sourdough starter. You'll notice that it looks a little different than if you've made sourdough bread before. It may look a little bit different because um, it's like liquid. Um, this is a, like a potato sourdough starter. You don't just feed it with flour and water. You actually feed it with potato flakes and sugar and water. So first, so I just pulled this right out of the fridge. So I'm gonna do one cup of really warm water. You don't want like boiling water cause it'll kill your sourdough starter, but I usually use the hottest that'll come out of the sink. And then we're gonna do three tablespoons of potato flakes. Oops. And we'll do a half cup of sugar. So from here, just stir it together. And we just wanna to try to dissolve that sugar a little bit so that it all pour into the starter equally. All right, once that sugar is dissolved, we'll just pour it right into our starter. Set the lid on. Now it's important, you don't wanna seal the lid because the sourdough yeast needs room to breathe and air to breathe. So just set it on there lightly. And then this will just get set on your counter and I will typically, I'll pull this out in the morning and just feed it and set it on my counter and let it sit all day, anywhere between like eight to 12 hours. Just set it on my counter and then we'll come back after that's nice and active and we'll mix together our dough. That's it. I wanted to show you guys what this looked like when your starter started to activate and really start feeding on those potato flakes and sugar that you added. You can see it's grown a ton up here. My starter has been sitting all day. I already poured out of it, but it got really active and bubbled up and I had a little short clip of what it kind of looked like during the process too, but I already measured it out. So this will just go back in the fridge. To start making our bread loaves for the dough that we're gonna leave sitting overnight, well, I'm gonna take my ring off first because it'll end up caked with dough if you don't. But we need six cups of bread flour and an alternative to this, you can also sub in like two cups of whole wheat and four cups of bread flour, or you can do rye flour and bread flour. I recommend having some bread flour in there because it helps give it that good texture and rise and stuff, but you can vary it a little bit with different flours that you like to use. So that's six cups. We have a tablespoon of salt. I like to use Himalayan salt. And then I'll just stir that at this point. You can also add in sugar if you want. You can add anywhere from fourth a cup, half a cup, however sweet you like it. If I use all bread flour, I actually like to leave the sugar out because I feel like it just has really good flavor without it. If I use a lot of whole wheat, sometimes I'll add maybe a couple tablespoons or a quarter cup of sugar, but I really don't think it needs it personally, but that's what I'm used to. So you can also add anywhere from nothing to half a cup of sugar here if you want as well. And then just stir together your dry ingredients. So then we have one and a half cups of hot water that we'll add in. Again, it's like the hottest that will come out of my faucet, not boiling. We have one cup of the starter that I already poured out. We'll add that. And then we have a half a cup of oil that we'll add in. You can use vegetable oil. I like to use refined coconut oil because it doesn't have the taste, but I feel like coconut oil is a little healthier. So I like to use coconut oil in mine personally. And then you're just gonna mix it together. So prepare to get your hands dirty.
Here we're just gonna stir it together to just get all the ingredients mixed, mixed up into a dough. This is the fun part, guys. <laughs> if you like to get your hands dirty and uh, really get in that bread dough, here's your opportunity. So I'm not really kneading it, I'm just trying to get it to come together into one kind of solid ball of dough. Okay, looking good. All right, once it looks about like this, we are ready to, I just, I cover it with like a big like proofing bag. It's a, just a plain plastic bag that I will stick this in and we're gonna let it sit all night. It is now first thing in the morning. It's been about 11 hours since this has sat overnight. This you can see, this is the bag that I covered it with. And you can also see how it's grown a lot. And that's normal for bread. That's a good thing. All right. So I like to just sprinkle with flour just so it doesn't stick to me. And then you're gonna punch it down. This is also the fun part. <laughs> so this recipe makes two sandwich loaves. So you have to divide it in half. And what I like to do is have a scale and then I'll just kind of roughly pull it apart what I think is half and just kind of make sure they're kind of the same size so they are consistent loaves when they rise. So I have my scale. Divide this in half, roughly what I think. around 8.20 each. Yep. Sprinkle your counter with some flour. You don't need a lot, just basically so it doesn't stick to the counter while you're shaping. And sometimes you don't even need this. Honestly, I might not even need much. But you're just gonna knead it a couple of times. Knock out some of the air bubbles, just so they don't have big gaps of air in your loaf, like your sandwich loaf. You don't wanna, in an artisan bread, it's kind of cool, but in a sandwich loaf, you don't wanna open it up and have a, a big air hole in there because if you're using it for peanut butter and jelly or grilled cheese or any of that kind of stuff, you just don't want a gap in there for the insides to fall out. <laughs> All right, now what I like to do is just kind of drag it into the shape that I wanna make here, just to get an even seam on the bottom. Okay, so it looks about like that. And then you have a greased bread pan that you set, set it in just like that. And then we'll cover this with a towel and I like to put it in the oven because it just, it prevents it from getting knocked around if it's on my kitchen counter. And it's also just out of the way. I use my kitchen a lot. You can also turn the oven light on, which will just, if you leave it on for a little bit, it'll kind of create a warm environment in there for the dough to rise. So if you're, if it's winter, like it is here, um, as much as it is in Florida, but if it's kind of cool in your house, it'll take longer to rise. So that can just help speed up the process a little bit. Sourdough in general is just a long process, but that can help it move along a little faster. Okay, we have both loaves done. So these two, I'll just co cover with a towel that doesn't have, it's like a lint, just use like a lint-free kitchen towel. And then I'll stick them in the oven and we'll come back later to bake them. All right, we're back at looking at the bread. It's been about six and a half hours. So I'll show you. It's definitely risen up. <laughs> it's 
nice and to the, over the tops of the pans. So what we're gonna do is, I actually don't even bother preheating my oven. These have been sitting here and I'm just gonna leave them. So I'm gonna set the oven for 350. So we have that in the oven baking at 350 degrees. We're gonna leave it in there for 35 minutes since I did not preheat my oven. If you take your loaves out and you preheat your oven first, then just leave it for 30 minutes and it should be done by then. So I will see you back in 35 minutes and see how that bread looks. All right, our timer went off. Let's check it. Oh, it looks beautiful. We're gonna take these out. We have our loaves out of the oven. They smell amazing. My house smells amazing. So what we'll do is I just have a cooling rack right here. I just wanna dump them out. And if you greased your pan well, that should be very easy. So this will just dump out like this. And then we'll leave these to cool. Growing up in my family, we always had a rule that if fresh bread came out of the oven, didn't matter what time of day it was. We all got to try a piece. And I think I'm keeping that tradition with my girls. So we will all be cutting into a slice of this soon to taste it. I got myself a cutting board. My girls are very eager to try this. So we'll go ahead and cut into it. Normally it's nice to just leave it and let it cool for a little bit before you cut into it. Cause it just helps, you know, the steam inside to not make the dough, like, or to make the bread doughy but my girls are really wanting to try this for a snack, so. I have a little fire for you. Oh yeah, perfect. This makes beautiful sandwich loaves. This dough is so versatile, you can use it for pizza dough, you can make cinnamon rolls out of it. If you do make cinnamon rolls, I will add the sugar earlier on when I showed you how to make the dough. I will make that a little bit sweeter for cinnamon rolls. Um, you can throw in some cinnamon raisins and make it cinnamon raisin bread. Like I already gave you the variation for whole wheat, but there's just, you can use this for anything and it's fantastic. Enjoy guys. <laughs> All right, girls, you gonna try a piece? Yeah! Yeah? Come here, Abby. Come here. You wanna try a piece? You wanna try this? Oh, you blowing on it? Is it hot? Yeah. You wanna take a bite? What do you think? It's yum? Yeah. 